Hi neighbors, welcome back to another video of Cooking with Neighbors. It is I, Jerry Ellen, and today we are making an apple cobbler in the crock pot. I'm combining my Friday, what I do is baking, and I'm doing a fall food Friday with my friend Linda at Create with Linda. And we got one more after this that we're going to do together. And I'm combining it with a crocktober with my ladies, uh, Shorty Vaughn from Crazy But Not Dangerous and Mel from Cooking with Cousin Mel and Linda from Create with Linda. Throughout the month of, of October, uh, we're doing we're doing Croctober together. I don't know how many they're gonna do. I don't know what days they're gonna post. So I'm gonna put their links in the description box so that you can head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss all the great content from these lovely ladies. Anyway, let's get on to this. Okay, I got my, cro my, my handy dandy crock pot right here in front of me. Anyway. Apple cobbler in the crock pot. It's delicious. I'm gonna make an apple pie filling right quick. I peeled and thinly sliced six cups of apples. Get your favorite kind. Granny Smith, Gala, whatever you want. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. This is easy peasy, comes together quick. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put a half a cup of granulated sugar in here. I'm gonna sprinkle it on over the apples. If you go a little bit more than that, I'm not gonna judge you because I just did it myself. Okay. Where's the cover? I'm gonna put uh, about, uh, put a half a teaspoon anyway of salt. One quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. One teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon. Delicious. I'm gonna put two tablespoons of lemon juice. That's our apple pie filling. Now on to the cobbler mixture. In a bowl, let's do this. I'm gonna put a cup of all-purpose flour, half teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. How are you all today? This beautiful day in the neighborhood. Okay. Don't forget the half cup of sugar, lady. I'm gonna put a half a cup of milk. You can use canned milk, you could use whole milk, evaporated milk, buttermilk, whatever milk you want. Here's the half cup of sugar, lady. Two tablespoons of melted butter. And a good teaspoon of vanilla extract. It's going to coagulate inside my whisk. Smells good already. Oh, you wanna know what else you're gonna need? Gee, Jerry, don't say and when it was, well, you should have put in your half a cup of sugar. Already, now it's gonna just be more difficult to mix. I'm like, that doesn't look right. There we go. Do as I say, not as I do, add that to your flour mixture. But it's going to get in there. I'm going to make sure of it, aren't I? Let's let's do this. Let's mix it in there good. Sorry about that. I'll put the ingredients up on the screen. Squish that in there now. It mixes better if you already had it in with your flour, okay? Wash them again. Get a spoon. Oh yeah, that's okay now. It feels okay now. I'm gonna drop uh, pieces over this. Spread it on over whatever way you want to do it. 
I'm not going to judge you there neither. You can put big dollops, small dollops, big spreads, not so big spreads. You're gonna break it up even if it ends up fluffing together. Even if you want to put it as one big crust over, you're gonna break it apart when you're serving it. Anywho. I wanna say something to you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for taking some time out of your day to be here in this kitchen with me. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I don't wanna go without saying that. I'm gonna put the cover on this thing. Neighbors, I thought I'd come on and tell you something. My friend Shorty, Vaughn, my friend Shorty Vaughn over at Crazy But Not Dangerous, she said, she gave a tip in one of her videos. Put a wooden spoon in the top of your crock pot to remind people not to open it, that it's still not ready. The spoon, set, it lets people know it's not ready, don't open it. Because you know, when you're cooking stews, stuff like that, you lift the lid or whatever, you're adding more time to your cook and you don't want to do that. But anyway, I also think that if somebody opens it and the wooden spoon was there, you can whack them with it. So yeah, you know. I wouldn't do that, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Just Josh and yeah, I wouldn't do that. Neighbors, I needed to show you the sweet little Harrietta. She's having a little nappy poo. We got her, uh, we picked up this uh, area rug. I gotta get the wrinkles out of it. Um, because uh, Harrietta's back legs give out on her sometimes and the hardwood floor is difficult for her some days so we don't want her jumping off the couch and hurting herself or anything so we picked this up and that that hopefully should help her a bit yeah neighbors this smells amazing so my topping is all set up that's what you're waiting for, between two and three hours. And I cooked this on high for two and a half hours. So if you're doing it on low, I would guess double that, except for I think this works best on high because it uh, needs to really bubble. I'm gonna let this cool down a bit and I'll show you a plate picked up in a wee little bit. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I just, I just broke uh, it apart with my spoon and I'll pick this up and plate it. Stick around. You gotta see it. It's so delicious. Okay. I need to pick up a little platey poo. Yes indeed doodly. Got some cool whip. Cool whip. A little bit of the juices there. Goodness me, just that alone. I gotta rinse the wipe this off. It's still it's still warm. Tasty poo time. Okay. Cheers everybody. Mm -hmm. I should put the tea on. I have to get the tea going for hobby. Mm. Try it. Try it, try it, try it. It's so delicious. It certainly is. Mm. It has just enough of uh, the nutmeg and cinnamon. It's just perfect. Absolutely perfect. Anyway, peace, love, God bless. Please come back again. Bye.